All right, here we go. I'll get, go ahead and get started. Maybe we can get through this. Um, just a little bit about my weed management program this past year. We had seven experimental herbicides. I've had as many as four, 13, 14 over the past few years. Many of these are already labeled products that companies are looking at prepackaged mixtures. I've got a couple that aren't labeled yet. Uh, there's an FMC product that's coming along that I have not looked at that I should get this year. Uh, that's more of a residual soil applied barnyard grass herbicide. I'll know a lot more about it next year. Uh, we've done quite a bit of what I call upland rice, what you guys are calling fur irrigated rice, mainly looking at overlaying residuals, uh, kind of what uh, Michael was talking about a while ago from an economic standpoint, the cost of, of things like that. I'm going to touch a little bit on Loyant coated fertilizer. I think it's got a little bit of fit for us in, in the state, especially in southwest Louisiana. Talk a little bit since Adam's not here about the Provisia lines. Adam Famosa and I have done quite a bit of work on the tolerance of the Provisia lines. And uh, we do do a lot of work with rates of Provisia and what, what rates you need at a certain growth stage uh, to kind of see what we can do there from a rate standpoint. Talk a little bit about the row rise system. Mainly what we're doing is looking at, you know, overlaying residuals. We know what these herbicides are going to do. I can tell you what the herbicide is going to do on dry ground. I can tell you what the herbicide is going to do when it's flooded. Uh, there are certain herbicides that need flooded conditions. Uh, so, and there are others that work a lot better when it's in a, under more of a dry or an upland type situation. We looked at the clear field hybrid. We had Gemini planted this year. We applied command across the entire study at an X rate for us in South Louisiana. That'd be about 12 and a half ounces. Uh, and that's a little high for us in a lot of spots down there. And up here, you know, if we were at St. Joe, we were putting 26 ounces. Uh, we followed that with an early post mixture of products that had residual activity and in post-emergence products as well. And then we have it with and without a late post application. Do we need that third application? Again, with some residuals in there, just constantly overlaying those residuals keeping those weeds small, even if we need a post treatment later on, we're not dealing with as big a weed. Main thing I'm gonna talk about is barnyard grass management. And that's what we get into, and especially in a, up here in, in North Louisiana, my work at St. Joe, once I get into the hot time of the summer, in that late May, early June, it gets extremely hot and dry. That barnyard grass gets extremely hard to control. So what I'm trying to do here is, what can I do from a residual standpoint, laying stuff on it constantly that I'm, I'm staying ahead of the game. So I'm going to lay out this slide real quick. I uh, got control over on the left hand side. My clusters of bars here. This is my early post treatment. Again, this entire area had had command pre. So we got no early post. You see the control there. The, the left hand bar there, that's at 14 days after the early post treatment. And then we, we put a late post treatment, but this particular data does not have that late post treatment in there. So roughly three weeks after this, would, the late post treatment would have gone on this day, 14 days after the early post, and then we rated it 21 days later. So what you see here is most of our residuals, this is New Path Command, New Path Prowl, New Path Rice 1, which is New Path, followed by Rice 1, which is Command, basically a clomazone plus a Prowl prepackaged mixture from UPL. We got New Path Gambit. I put that in there from a broadleaf residual activity. It doesn't necessarily have any barnyard grass activity, but do I need that residual and post-emergence activity on broadleaves? And then out here is Clear Path, which is New Path plus Quinclorac. Most of my, without that late post, we're seeing drop in control of barnyard grass anywhere from about 15% down to 30% control of barnyard grass. Again, this gambit has no activity on barnyard grass. The only post emergence residual we have here is the new path. So you can see if without that late post, we're getting that drop in barnyard grass. Now, when we look at it, I've jumped one. When we look at it where we have that late post treatment in there, again, no early no early post here, just the late post after the command pre, I'm getting close to 60% control of the barnyard grass. What I really like is if you look in that, that late post treatment was command or new path plus regiment. So that gives me my regiment, really good activity on large barnyard grass late. And then the new path, I'm getting some activity post-emergence plus that's residual with the new path. So here we're getting 
you know, upwards of 85 percent control across the board. This is a treatment I really like on this on this upland type rice, row rice, is to have that quinclorac in the system. What will happen with quinclorac or facet, it'll bind for, on the soil, and then every time it gets a rainfall or a flush, it'll release itself. So you kind of have, a, if you will, sort of a slow release activity out of it. So that's why I really like to have that quinclorac in the system. If you don't have a lot of sprangle top in your, in your system, that, this works really well. If you don't have any barnyard grass resistant to facet, again, that's a really nice combination. And that's one that's kind of stuck out for us over the last few years. And again, if you look at the, the yield, uh, whether we followed it with the, the, the clear path, this is early post, uh, clear path, and then follow it with a low, late post treatment, again, with that new path regiment kind of bumped that control up there. We're getting a lot better, better yield out of it compared to where we do not follow it. So that's basically what I'm saying here is I'm putting three applications, the pre-emergence residual, I'm following up at, at one to two leaf rice with another, uh, early, with an early post ap application that has a residual and a post-emergent component to it. And then again, about two weeks after that, I'm hit, two to three weeks after that, I'm hitting it again with another residual plus a post-emergence product there. So you're constantly doing something to this, staying ahead of the game from a residual standpoint. Kind of give you some idea. It's kind of hard to see. This is command followed by new path plus command here. Got some breaks in the in the uh, sprangle top and barnyard grass, but you also see some some broad leaves in there like sesbania. Kind of hard to pick out. This is gambit with no and new path early post with no late post. You can see the barnyard grass kind of breaking throughout there. But then when we follow that, we got Gant command plus new path gambit plus new path regiment. So that's three applications, not a treat, a cheap treatment, but a nice weed control program there. And again, one of the things I've done the last couple of years, I've gone to relatively large plots. This is a, about, uh, they're, they're 10 foot wide and 30 feet long. Gives me a little bit of, a little bit better view of what I'm looking at. So one of the things you do when you're, when you're looking at, at weeds, we, uh, herbicides for weed control in that in that fur irrigated system is you start looking at what herbicides we call pro herbicides and what pro herbicides are is something that has to be converted to the active form so the form you put on the rice is not the herbicide that's working in the way it has to be converted so what happens there is you've got some herbicides like loyant any of the grass herbicides clencher provisia those are ones that when you spray them out, they're not active. They go through a transformation in the plant that makes them active. This is rogue. This will not have an option in fur irrigated rice. It has to be flooded when it goes out. But one of the things it has to do is when it's put in the water, it goes through a chemical process that kicks it to the active form. So anytime you do that, you're putting a herbicide that's a pro herbicide that has to be converted make sure moisture is present. I'm not saying it necessarily has to be flooded, except in the case of, of rogue, but it has to have extremely good moisture. The weeds have to be actively growing for that process to occur. If you do anything to stress that, that herbicide doesn't work correctly. So the things that I do not like in, in when, when there's no flood present is Londax is a much better herbicide when it's flooded. Loyant will work without the flood, but when you compare it to a flooded situation, there's no comparison from a, from a weed control standpoint. Clencher, I never recommend clencher unless the flood is there. So I would never recommend that in an, in an upland situation in a fur irrigated system. And of course, Rogue is another one that this just doesn't fit because it has to be flooded in order for that one to work. You know, one of the things I've always told people is the last time you grew rice, what's your weed pressure? If you're going to fur irrigated, you had soybeans the year before or some other crop, know what the weeds were in that. That's more than likely the ones that you're going to be dealing with. You're going to see a weed shift in a lot of cases, maybe not initially, but over time you're going to see it move more to what you're normally seeing in a, in a soybean field or a cotton field or even a corn field. You're going to pick up more goose grasses, Johnson grass and pigweeds. We always have pigweeds around the levees, but if you've got a good flooded rice system, even with pigweeds, you can eventually take them out. It takes a while. I do like the quinclorac in this situation. Uh, use herbicides at programs that have multiple modes of action. Command, Prowl, uh, Gambit that's got two ALS products in it. 
rice one that has command and prowl in it. Those kind of things. Every time that the more active ingredients you have out there, the more you kind of help yourself from that de resistance development. Again, barnyard grass is probably going to be one of the big driving uh, keys here. Again, when it gets hot and dry, it gets very hard to control. And water is your friend. Again, whether you're going to flood it or not, it's nice to keep that moist and keep those weeds actively growing so those herbicides will work. I'm going to show you a little bit about what I mean by that flood and that water use just by some of my loyant work. We started this a couple of years ago just based on some of our field reps down here in South Louisiana. We're wanting to apply it on the fertilizer, and it does have some utility. Just want to show you here, these are some large plots, and we, we have a, a flood, zero days. We put, we put the uh, boy in on 150 pounds of fertilizer and put it out on dry ground, which I don't like to do, but we put it out on dry ground, and we followed with a flood immediately. As soon as we treated it, we put the flood on. And then we have a, actually have a spray back here just prior to, to putting the flood on. So we, we treated it with the fertilizer. Within a couple of hours, we established the flood on this area. The only thing this plot has had on it is a half a rate of command. And for us, this would be six ounces. This is in South Louisiana at the Rice Station on, on the South Farm. So that's at zero days. This was taken about three to four weeks after, after the flood. This is urea treated uh, with loyant right here. Uh, Got the same urea rate. This just had the loin on it. There's really not a lot of difference between that non-treated and that only again, the only thing this has on it is command. If we wait five days to put that flood on it, here's the same plot here. You can see the barnyard grass starting to take over. No difference between that loin applied on dry ground there. That's five days after. If I wait 10 days before I establish that flood, that's what it looks like. So this is this is six ounces of command and then hold that flood off for several weeks for 10 days after the early post treatment went on. So it, it gave it plenty of time for that, that herbicide to break and we did not have that water in there holding that, that down. Water is a great grass herbicide, especially if it's, it is not germinated. Most grasses will come through mud or water, but they won't come through mud and water. So that's why the water seeded systems always work well for us in South Louisiana. Again, the loin impregnated on fertilizer, it'll work in certain areas, especially if the weeds are small. I like it much better when it's put in the flood. Uh, it's not as good on emerged weeds as say the sprayed uh, is, but again, if you've got small weeds and a flood established, it does work pretty well. Uh, again, works best in the flood. Spray is much more consistent uh, but there are some cases where we just can't use it. We're close to a, a sensitive crop or we got neighbors by. Uh, again, it works really well in those type situations. Uh, again, we're going to continue to evaluate the rates. We're going all the way down to two ounces of loin. I can tell you, 16 ounces of loin is way too much. You don't need near that much loin. And that gets us into trouble in a lot of cases. It is a broadly herbicide that happens to have a little bit of activity on barnyard grass, but I do not count that. You do not need 16 ounces. In most cases, eight to 10 is really all you need, whether you're putting it on a fertilizer or whether you're spraying it on. Real quick on Provisia tolerance. This is some work that, that Adam and I have done. Uh, the breeder, we looked at 15 and a half ounces applied twice, 31 ounces applied twice. So this is a one X rate applied twice, this is a 2x rate applied twice, and this is a 3x rate applied twice. This year we had three of the experimentals in, the, in, in this test, 2074, 2174, 2178. We had PVLO2, which was, a, was grown this year commercially, and then PVLO1, which was the pre predominant line the last two years. If you look at injury, the, the 1x rate, not too bad, this is about eight days after the second application. This is two, a 2x two rate twice. Again, not a lot of difference between the experimental lines, but you really see a big bump here at the 3x rate on the, the injury, and it's still not too bad. But the one I want you to look at, we'll get a little bit of a blip here, is this blue one and this yellow one. This yellow one on the far left there, that is actually going to be PVL03. That's the next line coming along. If you look at the yields on those, 
this yellow bar on the left and the blue bar, that's PVLO2, they pretty much track, get a little bit of a reduction here for some reason at the 2X rate twice, but the, the 3X rate twice, they're basically tracking about the same. So this is really good variety. PVL01 looks like if you, if you sprayed it or if you've seen it in the field, it looks like it's got 20% injury before you ever treat it. It's kind of a yellow, ragged looking rice. These other two, like PVL02 and the new PVL03, nice, dark, deep green color. It's a nice, attractive rice. Uh, you know, one of the things that we see is we always see some injury and I, with this technology, I don't think we're ever going to get out of it. And there are going to be times when it's going to kind of bite you. And you're not, I don't have an explanation of necessarily why that happens. I can't tell you you're going to get more injury this time than you will in previous. But I can tell you these, these O2, the O3, a much deeper, darker green. They, don't, they may be injured the same amount. They just don't look as bad as the O1 does. Uh, again, these are really good lines. They're good yielding lines. One of the things that we've noticed with Provisi, if you talk to the BASF guys, and I preached this all along, that they were going to need a third application. Provisi does have some residual, not a lot, so you're going to have to have something in there. With the Clearfield system, we had two shots of new path. We found out real quick we needed a third application. So that's when they came with Beyond. BASF is probably going to label three applications. If you split that out, that's roughly 10 followed by 10 followed by 10. That will work if you're on top of it. 10 ounces is plenty, especially on two to three liter red rice. You don't need near that much. But as that rice gets larger, you get in the PI stage on red rice or weedy rice, depending on what it is, it's very difficult to control with 10 ounces. BASFs is going to look at increasing their rate. The problem with it is you just can't go to the EPA any longer and say, hey, you want to bump my rate? They, they'll make you go back all the way through the residue trial. So if they decide they want to go up to a higher rate, say 46 ounces total, they're going to have to go back and do all the residue trials again or the ones that the EPA asked. But they are, my understanding is they will have a three application label. Again, injury may always be a problem with this technology. We lucked out with clincher. We really don't ever see injury with clincher. But the other grass herbicides, you can pretty much expect at some point in time you're going to get a little bit of injury. Again, uh, don't let the weeds, Ronnie kind of talked about this, don't let them get ahead of you. It's much easier to control a small actively growing weed. Uh, I, I say this all the time. I've never had a, read a herbicide label that says, wait till that weed gets three foot tall and then spray it. They always say small actively growing weeds. Uh, when, you, when you've got a pro herbicide, that herbicide that needs to be converted to the active form, make sure that it's not dry, that it's weeds are actively growing so it'll make that conversion. I like the loin on fertilizer. The Provisia lines, I think, will continue to improve over time. Again, the third application is something we're going to see from BASF, and, and we do need that. And again, injury will probably always be a problem. And that's all I have. If, uh...